Welcome to TikTok Live, Kevin Harris, Architect Talk, Fix the Floor Plan Live. Tonight we're doing a edition, edition of TikTok Live. So uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to start at six o'clock. And uh, welcome, Doug. Uh, this is Kevin Harris, Architect Talk, with Fix the Floor Plan Live. And uh, tonight I'm going to talk about a 1980s house. Uh, and then what we did to uh, improve it, improve its kitchen, improve its flow, uh, improve its livability uh, tremendously. So uh, stay tuned and we'll look forward to, to, uh, to sharing that with you. Uh, uh, DeWitt, welcome. Uh, Derry, welcome. Uh, this is Robert, welcome. Mars, 64. We we're a little bit early here. Uh, at six o'clock, I'm going to talk, but before that, I want to answer answer any questions that you have. So, uh, who am I talking with tonight? Who who is where are you from? And do you have anything to do with the construction industry? Uh, we'd love to hear. So let us know, and I'll uh, welcome uh, welcome him into view. Uh, John Spencer, welcome. Uh, Matt Dittman, welcome. Uh, Leonard, welcome. Uh, this is Kevin Harris with Architect Talk. Fix the floor plan live, and tonight I'm going to go through a 1980s house uh, that we uh, added on to. So this is the addition addition floor plan. Brooklyn, and you do interior design, Allison. Uh, welcome, Allison. And uh, uh, as an architect, I cannot take pictures of my projects, and they're not anywhere near as good unless I have an interior designer on the job for your profession. Uh, that guy, and hello, Austin, Texas. Land developer, wonderful. Uh, welcome. Charles, welcome. Lion Luxury Pools and Doodles, welcome. Fred Bloom, welcome. Uh, this is Kevin Harris with Architect Talk and Fix the Floor Plan Live. Tonight I'm going to talk about a 1980s house that we added on to in order to fix the floor plan and increase the livability of the house. Uh, so uh, where are you from? Arlington, Texas. Randy Copeland, uh, an architect. Wonderful. Uh, welcome. I'd love to get your comments. And uh, do you do uh, residential design, Randy? Uh, Priscilla, welcome. Uh, carpenter's daughter and mill worker. Again, uh, as an architect, I can draw it, but it doesn't look good and it can't be built without a good carpenter and especially the millwork. Uh, all the detail, God is in the detail and that comes with the millwork. So thank you. Uh, Sandy, welcome. Uh, Andrew, welcome. Oregon, welcome. Lovely joined, welcome. Uh, again, uh, let me know where you're from and I'd be happy to uh, chat with you. Randy Copeland, uh, welcome. Let me see. Architect, you, you you used to practice residential architecture. Okay, well uh, I love it. I'm 69. I'll be 70 this summer, and I'm just getting started. I just love it. I've been doing it my whole life, and uh, or my whole professional life for sure, and I love it. What's my relationship with surveyors? Don't start a project without a good survey. You got to have surveyors. Uh, they're, they're it's a wonderful profession, and they know the property corners. Uh, when you design the house, they know a lot so that the contractor uh, knows where to build it. So, uh, let me see. Uh, welcome, Brown. Uh, 72, Randy. Well, uh, uh, we're the same ilk. <laughs> we're the same ilk. Uh, that's good. That's good. We both started with uh, pen or pencil and paper and worked through uh, mylar and plastic pencils. Started with CAD and then have sort of mud wrestled with CAD my entire life. Uh, Allison, where did I study architecture? I studied architecture at LSU as an undergrad and then I went to Harvard for my graduate work. And then I uh, did a fellowship in Scotland and realized that uh, traditional architecture was where it was at for me, especially when the new town of Edinburgh, Scotland was 250 years old when I visited it. And they still call it the new town. Uh, where did you uh, learn uh, interior design, Allison? Uh, DJ Rizak, uh, roofer and estimator. Uh, welcome, Vic, welcome. What software do I use? Uh, initially, when I'm sketching in front of clients, this is my software right here, my hands, pen and pencil. But when I, uh, as soon as I get things uh, uh, a little bit uh, organized, 
Then we enter into ARCHICAD, and ARCHICAD is a program that I use. Uh, it's a BIM program, B-I-M, and BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. Uh, and it's essentially, when I draw a line, it says it's a wall in two dimensions. However, it also knows uh, how tall the wall is, what it's made of, and I can look at it in 3D. So uh, if before we ever thought that, well, we didn't know it was gonna be so ugly when it was in plan, and, and BIM, you know it's ugly, so you need to change it. And so it, it, it's a wonderful tool. Uh, welcome photo booth, you work with uh, 90, you're, 94 and working strong? Oh, I'm impressed. No, the engineer he works You're an engineer with. you no, work no. with. The, the engineer. engineer you work with is 94 and working strong. That's wonderful. Uh, that's great. Uh, you no, work no. with. The, the engineer. engineer you work with is 94 and working strong. That's wonderful. Uh, that's great. Uh, you see, uh, the, a local Baton Rouge architect, uh, A. Hayes Town, became quite famous. Uh, he lived to be 101. Uh, and I, uh, that's a wonderful goal to have. All right. Uh, uh, welcome, Taylor. You're uh, getting into architecture because house design is poor and the construction is even worse. It can be. Uh, however, if you work at it, uh, you can you can always get a good design on the house. And uh, my experience with residential renovations is 99% or more than 99% of them need work and so the the, the market to, to jump in as an architect and renovate houses is never ending it's or as i say it's endless how is my experience working with surveyors very good I, although i had one surveyor who this is before cad and uh bim came out uh, he gave me a print of a, a project site on a lake and it was a triangular shaped lot and so, like an idiot, uh, I realized at the time, I traced his property lines from his sheet of paper. And I didn't realize that uh, he, uh, uh, the triangle he had was wrong. At any rate, uh, my favorite building in Baton Rouge is by far the Old State Capitol, uh, built in uh, 1847 to 49. Uh, I'm working on it now, actually, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful building. It looks like a castle, uh, and it is now a museum of political and governmental history. So if you're in Baton Rouge, please come by and see it. If you're not, jump on the Internet and look up the Old State Capitol in Baton Rouge. It's, it's a wonderful building. Do I do fourplexes? I typically shy away from uh, anything except custom residential. Uh, I've seen some good ones, but uh, I've... Uh, have gotten away from that. The, uh, my practice is really specialized into single family custom residential. I've done a ton of TikTok on the old state capital. So uh, if you uh, follow some of my old pieces, you can uh, see what the old state capital looks like. It is wonderful. And right now I am redoing the floors and the Senate chamber. Uh, the Senate used to have uh, sort of stadium seating, if you will, for the senators. And uh, in 1994, it was made into a flat floor so that you could have uh, exhibits and uh, receptions. It was made into a flat floor so that you could have uh, exhibits and uh, receptions way expensive. And then they called me in and said, why are the floors, you know, it's time to redo the floors again. And I said, well, it, it's, it's happening too, too rapidly. Let's crack open that egg, so to speak, and see what's under the floor. And what we found was some uh, temporary craftsmanship up under in the framing where lots and lots of shims were used. And the floor, the framing was unstable. And so that meant the floor bounced. And when the floor, when wood floor bounces, the, uh, we're, we uh, fixed all that, put in trusses, keeping the existing uh, uh, 1947 framing in the floor. Uh, we also found a bunch of beer bottles under there, which may explain why the, uh, the, the carpentry was uh, uh, so. At any rate, uh, we were fixing it, and it will be open for the public in uh, the 20th of this month. Uh, it is in Baton Rouge, the old state capital. Uh, I have not worked with the Duplantis Design Group. No, uh, let me see. Uh, 
Let me see, the Senate chamber in D.C.? No, I'm working with the uh, Senate chamber in the old state capitol in Baton Rouge. Uh, but thank you. Uh, uh, let me see, the ACS Woodshop, welcome. Uh, you do custom cabinets. I love a good cabinet maker. Uh, and wood doors, we always do wood doors. Uh, what I found when, uh, when I first started my practice, I was teaching at LSU uh, full-time and had my practice part-time. And I wanted to study uh, the uh, traditional buildings in Louisiana. So I started looking at the doors, the windows, the dormers, the stairs, etc. The various parts or elements, if you will, of the Louisiana houses. And I uh, uh, went to one house and said, okay, let's, let's measure all the doors. They had 22 different types of doors in one house. And they also had 18 different windows. So I went to the next house. And granted, these were large mansions, but uh, my goodness, they, they couldn't make up their minds. I thought, you know, that each house had a different set of doors. For 62 of the houses that I uh, looked at and studied from south of New Orleans to north of Shreveport, uh, Louisiana, the entire state, I had 72 different front doors. Uh, no two houses had the same columns. And as far as the custom doors and the windows, there were custom for that design. And so from that point on, uh, instead of playing Mr. Potato Head and pulling the doors or the windows from a catalog, it's custom and it fits with the house. Same thing with the millwork. Uh, and that's, that's just the way to make it a, a beautiful building. You have to do it custom. So as far as your uh, woodworking shop, thank you and uh, keep it up because good architecture needs good craftsmen, uh, especially uh, woodworking. Uh, uh, Spam 3575 just got licensed. Congratulations. It is a you know, with, with uh, uh, licensing is tough to be licensed as an architect. The licensing process was supposed to increase the number of architects, but it seems to be doing the opposite. So congratulations in getting your license. I'm proud of you. That's great. All right. Uh, you're, uh, you're putting this on while you're reviewing house plans for a local jurisdiction. Well, I'm not going to get into code issues here. It's uh, some uh, aggravations for sure, but not code issues, because this was a 1980s house, and other than some tiny doors in a few places, there's no real code issues. And but, you're uh, talking about local jurisdictions at lunch today. But, uh, local jurisdictions, yeah, local jurisdictions are important, uh, and the code officials are good because, uh, and very necessary, because too many, too often, uh, people will design a house and they'll focus on one aspect and forget all about the whole building code. Uh, in order to solve one problem. And the, uh, the building inspectors and the plan reviewers help catch that before it even gets into construction. So, so thank you for what you do. Uh, calling yourself an architect, you cannot do if you're not licensed in that uh, jurisdiction. So sure. in, in uh, the states, in the United States, there's 50 uh, states, you have to get a license in every one of those states if you want to practice or call yourself an architect in those states. Myself, I'm an architect. I could call myself an architect only in five states. That's Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. I picked those five states because we all have similar problems. We've got lots of bugs. We've got lots of humidity. We've got hurricanes. And we've got uh, alluvial soil. Sometimes it just... In New Orleans, they call it gumbo. That's the soil. And so uh, we have similar problems and uh, a wonderful architecture. And so I uh, decided to focus on, on just those areas. Uh, welcome, Dave. You're teaching seventh grade election, elective in uh, architectural design, designing one-story floor plans and budgets. Wonderful. That's, that's Seventh grade is a great, great age to uh, uh, introduce them to architecture. Uh, introduce them to this. This is a, an architect scale. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but most uh, most of my clients aren't familiar with the architect scale. But it helps you. Uh, it gives you six different scales of uh, actually uh, more than that. For because uh, if you have a drawing, it's three eighths of an inch here, three eighths of an inch equals one foot. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. But you see that fourteen. 
That's if you're using a three quarter inch scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So you have a three quarter scale, three eight scale. All right, flip it. You've got an inch and a half scale or a three inch scale or a quarter inch scale, which is most commonly used for uh, drawing architectural plans or an eighth inch scale, which is half of it. And so teaching, it, uh, especially a seventh grade student, on how to read an architect's scale is a wonderful thing. Uh, a great resource for you to share with your students, uh, look up the Institute for Classical Architecture and Art. Their website is classicist.org. And uh, look, they have wonderful resources to explain classical architecture and to explain uh, how to draw classical architecture. So let's get started. And here's what we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm Kevin Harris with Architect Talk. This is Fix the Floor Plan Live. This is an addition edition. So I'm gonna talk about a house in Baton Rouge. Uh, it was built in the 1980s and it has uh, some issues. But first, I'm going to walk you through the floor plan, and then we'll start recording what the issues are. The, uh, let me see, the uh, foyer is right here. So this is a front porch. It's a beautiful facade. What you're not seeing on the plan is there's an existing bedroom wing on the right side, which was bigger than a sheet of paper. Uh, so I figured we just, and I'm not touching it, so it's it as well as the uh, the dining room and the in the foyer and the front porch and that's are going to stay. That's really touching. And so uh, one of my uh, recommendations or rules, if you will, in doing a renovation, if you're going to renovate a house, you in order to make it economically feasible, you need to keep as much of the existing house as possible when you do the renovations, and and be very selective on just renovating something. Think twice. Think three times before you take down a wall. But if you need to take down a wall, you need to, I need, I feel like I need to explain to my client, there's a big, big advantage if you do this. And so uh, that's, uh, that, that's where I come from. So uh, uh, a renovation, most of this house has got to exist and, and remain economically. Because otherwise, it's always cheaper to build a new house than it is to, go in and completely redo an existing house. It costs about the same, but you'll have way more square foot footage and uh, higher appraised value uh, if you start over with the same project. So uh, there's gotta be some redeeming characters to the house other than the site or in addition to the site. So uh, I will, uh, let, let's move on. So we've got the foyer right here where you enter the house. And it works out greatly. It, it's a it's a wonderful foyer. Here's my scale I'll use for the uh, the surveyor. It's eight feet wide, so eight feet is a lovely uh, space for a foyer. And right when your guests come into the foyer, to the left is a dining room, and it's not a tiny dining room either. It's uh, let me see, 18 feet by uh, 14 feet. So plenty of room for furniture and a great big table, uh, and it's a cased opening here, so it's very welcoming. So if you're coming for a dinner party, you can see the table set and uh, it's a wonderful atmosphere. So when you come in, formal living room with a very nice fireplace and bookcases on either side. On the back side, there's uh, kind of out of place for a formal living room, but it's a kind of a wet bar. And then there's two closets. One ends up being the coat closet and one ends up being just an extra closet. And then there's a door, lovely outdoor patio. It's not covered, it's just outdoor. And so, uh, so here's the foyer, here's the dining, and then here's the uh, formal living room. And here's the backyard, this is just a, a, a patio. The uh, kitchen is right here. And it's a, a good kitchen, I'll uh, discuss it. But this great big space here, the uh, realtors call it a keeping room. And this is a large keeping room. And uh, it's, it's one that uh, 
is great for if as a keeping room for the kitchens. You have breakfast, but it's uh, there's no den in this house, so there's no informal living area. I did a TikTok on just keeping rooms and what the origin is. So check check out that on my uh, uh, TikTok site. It's Architect Talk. Anyway, uh, behind the kitchen is uh, kind of a, a butler's pantry, if you will. Now, an issue with the butler's pantry is lots of work counter space, right? And uh, there's an extra stove, there's an extra sink, there's an extra refrigerator, freezer. That's great, but where do you store your food? Well, you've got these two ridiculous, I think, closets to store the food. And then this little tiny door here is actually, somebody thought it would be great to put a, a fold down ironing board. And uh, they decided later that that didn't work. So where the washer dryer originally was, they decided to make that just an extra cooktop and make it just for dedicated to just the, uh, uh, the pantry area. Then they moved the uh, laundry over to here, to this area. So the door's offset. There's a cabinet here that sort of uh, acts as a closet storage space for the keeping room. But this is the utility room. Facing the front uh, gallery or the front porch, if you will. So we've got a kitchen, beautiful view, looking out over the driveway to the landscaping here from the kitchen the pantry. There's a door to the backyard, so this is the rear yard. And then uh, here's your garage, so you got room for two cars. And it's a nice extra deep garage. It's, uh, let me see, it's uh, 24 feet wide and it is 23 feet deep. And then there's a, a work room, storage room right here with uh, shelves and cabinets where you store your lawnmower, your weed eater, your shovels, and that sort of thing. Uh, table saw if you, if you have one. Uh, now what's missing with this house? What are, the, what are the issues, if you will? The issues for this house are, uh, there's no, write this, there's no den. say it's missing and this is why they call me there's no den okay uh, prime dog thank you a pantry you call a scullery this this works it's also called the butler's pantry yes and that's what we call them uh it's it's larger than just because there's space for uh, a butler if you will and uh or for all the stuff to uh your coffee maker anything you'd leave out on your counters you can put in your butler's pantry and get them out of the way, which is great. But what's missing in this house is the den. In Louisiana, we have, uh, you know, it, it was 70 degrees yesterday, it was 50 degrees this morning, but yesterday I'd wanna spend my time outside, it was beautiful. Uh, and if I'm gonna go outside, I wanna be in the shade, there's no covered outdoor area here. So it's uh, outdoor living. Outdoor living. The, uh, uh, in Hawaii, they have a wonderful word for the outdoor living space. They call it a lanai, and it's a great space. So it's where you put your, out, your uh, outdoor kitchen, you'd entertain. It needs to be big enough to uh, have furniture and gatherings in Louisiana just coming up in the spring, and just maybe a month's time, the crawfish season starts, and we'll have lots of crawfish boils. Uh, when it's not crawfish season, it's shrimp season. So we'll have shrimp boils or crab boils. And so uh, our, uh, during the rest of the year and all during the year, actually, you can have barbecues. And so we, in Louisiana, uh, we pass a good time, a lot of times with food, and we like to spend time outside, not just inside. Uh, so we go outside. Uh, why are the cars shaped like a pizza? Just because that was quick. We can... Uh, Put wheels on them if you like. <laughs> but it's just a quick way to show that these are cars. And there's space, ample space for two cars to pull in, a garage door to cover them. Uh, and then we've got the storage space back here. 
The other thing, the owners, they need uh, a den, which they don't have. The keeping room doesn't count as a den. What is a den? You're from England. Uh, a den is just a casual living room, if you will. Uh, you can uh, watch TV. You can, uh, if it's big enough, you can have a pool table or uh, some sort of sports uh, like that, uh, ping pong. Uh, but uh, you, it's a casual room for casual daily living. Uh, and formal living is where uh, you'd have tea time. Uh, if you're going to have a den, it, it's, it's just... Uh, just uh, let your hair down. You watch a football game and uh, eat popcorn and, and chicken fingers or chicken <laughs> wings, etc. So where is the washer and dryer? Right now, the washer and dryer is in the utility room, and it is right here. Got a, a washer, a dryer, and then there's an extra refrigerator right here. And this is just uh, and then uh, storage above that. What is a keeping room? A keeping room, uh, historically, it was a place to keep uh, people so they wouldn't be in the way of the cook in the kitchen and the open fire. Uh, over, over the uh, centuries, uh, it's been just a space to live in next to the kitchen. Uh, and so it's, it's called the keeping room. Uh, so and there's a table. That's what there is. That is, and it's, it's, I have a, a better description of it in uh, one of my TikToks. So, England, what do you call your TV watching casual area? Please let me know. Uh, again, this is Kevin Harris with Architect Talk. I'm doing a TikTok with an existing house in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Here's the floor plan before we've I've marked it up. We've got the foyer, the dining room, formal living, a backyard and a patio, a keeping room next to the kitchen, a pantry, this is the uh, a powder room or a potty for your guest. And then this is just a coat closet for, next to the garage and then kind of a drop zone, if you will. Uh, so the bedroom wing is off here to the right and we're not touching the uh, bedroom wing. Again, uh, I'd mentioned earlier, one of my uh, rules for doing a residential renovation is to keep as much of the existing house in place before you renovate it or to renovate it. And otherwise, it costs too much uh, and it's, it's not economically feasible. Yes, you can make it nice, you can uh, uh, fix whatever's wrong, but if it's just a minor wrong, yeah, uh, you know, like a misdemeanor, let it let it live, let it stay, uh, and and maybe you can come back later and fix it. But big stuff. So the problems with this house, the kitchen. Let's talk about the kitchen. We've got the. I'm a big fan of kitchen triangles. Well, this kitchen triangle a little bit wonky. Uh, the you got the cooktop here, you got your refrigerator freezer here, and then you got your sink on the island. Well. Those are in fairly close proximity of each other, and that, and that works well. But the, uh, the cooktop is such that this corner of the island, the owner has witnessed that there's a bruise on her right hip uh, bumping into that, or her left hip bumping into that, jumping. From it. And so uh, the kitchen can be improved. Another issue with the kitchen, and the, whole, and the living spaces. The living spaces are separate from the outdoors. This is the outdoor right here. And I'd mentioned that in Louisiana, you wanna have access to the out. The formal living room is the only space that really opens to the outside. The butler's pantry has a view of the outside. Now there's this hallway that connects the kitchen and keeping room to the backyard, but it's just a, it's a passageway. It doesn't open up into the view. So you've got this huge investment on this uh, lovely landscape patio with a fountain. And it's, you know, the formal living room can see it, but uh, you don't live in, at least in Louisiana, you typically don't live in the formal living area. You're very formal there and polite and you discuss things, but uh, uh, except you don't discuss politics, but you discuss uh, happy things. <laughs> and how's your family doing? Uh, and the kitchen, most families live in the kitchen in the keeping room. And this particular client, when they're entertaining, 
their guests go from the dining room to the formal living, sort of a Victorian back and forth, and they don't hang out in the kitchen. When they're, dine when they're having a dinner party, they'll come through here uh, and serve dinner, and then when dinner's over, they go to the formal living room. But it's, it's like these three rooms are all your guests really get to see. They don't get to enjoy your house, and you don't get to enjoy much of it because when it's set up this way, the formal living room in this particular house, and this is really just a hallway to get to the bedrooms. Otherwise, you know, the kids aren't allowed in here. I mean, I grew up in a house where it was built in the uh, 60s, uh, and uh, the formal living room, again, I had four brothers, so we had five boys growing up in this house. Our formal living room, nice furniture, it was for guests only, and it had white carpet. Are you kidding me? White carpet, what a disaster. Uh, so, you know, if we had muddy shoes, you could tell we'd left a trail behind, right? And so we'd get in trouble. So we stayed, we just avoided that room. And so I have, I have a, a thing for formal living rooms. If there's no den where you can uh, hang out and, and, and just be yourself, especially as a kid growing up, and you wanna be connected to the backyard. So uh, that's an issue with this house. The uh, other thing is that the owners wanted, they, they're very much into crafts. So where do you do the crafts? Well, in this particular house, the butler's pantry had a lot of cabinet space. It was out of the way. It even had a fold down ironing board right here that they could use as another counter space. And uh, that became the craft room. And it was, you know, if you're in the middle of a uh, craft project, and it's time for dinner, which of course it's going to be, uh, the pantry is in the way of the craft room. So these are the, uh, the things wrong, that's missing from the house. We need a den, we need outdoor living space, and we need a craft room. In addition to that, the owners wanted to add, add uh, two bedrooms. And why do they want to add two bedrooms? They wanted to add two bedrooms away from this area. This is where they lived. And they had this whole patio and the views to the backyard were lovely. And it's really centered around the owner's primary bedroom and bathroom suite. Then there was two bedrooms over here for the kids. But when they have guests from out of town, it's like they're stepping all over them because there's just one hallway in and one hallway out to the whole bedroom wing. But not TikTok, it's Tech Talk. Right? <laughs> well, very good, very Welcome good. To Welcome to Tech Talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, uh, so the owners wanted to have a place for the guest that would not be under their feet and so that they could have guests who could stay more than a week or more than three days like fish before they smell bad. And so uh, they wanted to add another, you know, somewhere other than this area uh, for, for the bedroom. So we, we're gonna add two bedrooms. And the last thing, they entertain a lot, they travel a lot around the world, and they collect things, they collect wine. Ever dealt with anyone who collects wine I, I recommend the site visits frequently. I recommend meeting with them multiple times in order to make sure the plan is right. And then uh, you, you'll enjoy some and learn a whole lot about some fine wine. At any rate, they wanted some wine and when they buy the wine, they buy it in cases. Uh, and because a lot of the wine they buy, they have no plans on drinking it until five, 10, 15 years later, and so if then. So you need to have essentially a warehouse that's temperature controlled for wine. They also wanted a safe room. Just in case, uh, you know, somebody decides to, a uh, casual robber decides to rob them in their neighborhood, they wanted a safe room where they could hide. And so, I wanted to make sure we had a safe room. So these are the spaces I wanna add. A den, an outdoor living area, a craft room, add two bedrooms, a wine room, and a safe room. In addition to that, the kitchen, I wanna fix the kitchen. So I'll put that on the list too. And 
and I want to connect the kitchen connect to the den and to the all right so we'll do those seven things we're going to add to the house right so let's take a break I'm Kevin Harris with Architect Talk. We're doing TikTok Live. I'm going to take a break and answer a few questions. This is uh, the existing house, and these are the things that are missing from it, and we're going to fix. So let me see. Uh, Savannah Banana. I love the Savannah <laughs> Bananas. Uh, great baseball team. They're hilarious on TikTok, too. Switch the butler pantry in the keeping area. Uh, except the keeping area is... Uh, it is a good idea. Good idea. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, more questions. Let me see. The keeping room might have a breakfast table and the formal dining, a larger table. All right, well, the formal dining room works great. The foyer works great. The formal living room works great. Uh, the keeping room they're very happy with the keeping room part of it. it it's, these are full walls. It's just a, a lovely cased opening, like two, a giant, like two doors, but there's no doors in the opening, all right? Uh, you can increase them next to the garage. I can't, next to the garage. I can't, I'm sorry, it scooted on me, I'm sorry. In Louisiana, you will need good cooling and humidity control for the wine. Yes, you do. You need your very own uh, system for that. And in times of hurricanes, you need a generator too to, uh, to power the cooling. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Savannah Banana, uh, this will not wash. You are absolutely correct. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, this is uh, an addition edition of Tick, Fix the Floor Plan Live. All right. Your dad always says a quote about fish and house guests. Yes, more than three days and it smells as bad as fish. You're correct. So, uh, let's see. Uh, somebody asked about the fire rating from the garage to the hallway. Bad as fish. You're correct. So, uh, let's see. Uh, somebody asked about the fire rating from the garage to the hallway. Oh, this is this has got to be uh, at least a one-hour firewall in the attic as well because the attics connect. And this is this has got to be a firewall. Very good comment. Kevin. Very good. Uh, that's part of the tech. Kevin. Part of this tech talk. This is this has got to be a firewall. Very good comment. Kevin. Very good. Uh, that's part of the tech. Kevin. Part of this tech talk. So, uh, a firewall. What is a firewall? If something happens in the garage, because you've got two vehicles with gasoline motors. Uh, unless it's uh, uh, electrical, but typically today the, uh, the majority of cars are gasoline operated. If there's a fire here, which is not all that today, the, uh, the majority of cars are gasoline operated. If there's a fire here, which is not all that unprobable, uh, a fire gets started here, it will very easily go into the attic and burn down the entire house. Uh, so a firewall is a wall that takes, and it's rated by how long it, how many, how many minutes or hours it takes for fire to penetrate through that wall. Uh, in 1988, my parents, my dad had uh, a car that uh, caught on fire. Its gas tank spread on my mother's car, which also caught on fire. And so we got two cars, two full tanks of gas burning. It went through the garage, uh, through the attic and burnt down the entire house. And so uh, I'm very sensitive to one, how wonderful firemen are and uh, how dangerous the absence of a firewall between a garage and, and a house can be. So that, that's a good point. All right. Uh, uh, you, let me see. Uh, we'll put $500 worth of junk in the garage and 660000 in the vehicles. <laughs> or parked in the driveway. I agree with that. And so, I, and, and I'll get to that. Uh, I agree. Uh, the, uh, one of the uh, solutions to that is to make the garage actually a carport so that you can, it's open air, or part of it's open air at least, and then you can see, uh, we've got a, you can 
for security, you can put a gate on the driveway. But if it's a carport, you're less likely, unless you clamp it and you want to, you're the type of, you put a refrigerator on your front porch, you keep your garage clean and you keep storage elsewhere. But that's a very good uh, hob bale, very good comment. I also have done a uh, live tick, uh, TikTok on versus garages, and I'm very much for uh, carports for that very reason. And up north. Up north, it's too bloody not to have a garage. And uh, you can, and I've done, uh, I used to be, have a, carry a license in Virginia, and I've done several houses there. One of them, I actually, uh, uh, when I went, I put a heated driveway so that the owner wouldn't have to, he was a physician, and you know, if there was a snowstorm, he'd get an emergency call, he'd have to leave, and I wanted to make sure that he could leave and go take care of, you know, save lives. We uh, slightly heated the concrete of his driveway just above freezing, and so he never had to, uh, you know, shovel snow on his driveway, and he loves it. So uh, let me see. So let me recap, and I'll uh, go back to uh, my, get on to my solution here. So uh, uh, first, a house tour. This is an existing house in Baton Rouge built in the 1980s. Uh, I have a, a, there's a bedroom wing to the right that is not shown because I haven't touched the bedroom wing at all. So you come into the front door here on the right of the veranda, got a wonderful foyer, a dining room, a living, formal living room, a, uh, a keeping room next to the kitchen, a utility room here in the front, uh, a butler's pantry with two closets that are the uh, uh, food storage. Uh, you've got a hallway here to the backyard, lovely backyard. You got a lovely patio here. Uh, you got a garage with a storage room. And you've got a the guest potty is right here, or the powder room, as we call them in Louisiana. Uh, nobody goes to the bathroom or to the potty or whatever. Uh, they go to the powder room. At any rate, uh, then we've got the coat closet and then storage. So that's the existing house. The owners wanted to have a den because the house, as lovely as it is, it did not have a casual living space for a den or a den. It did not have any covering spaces, which we need uh, in Baton Rouge. Also, the living spaces of the house are separated from the backyard. The owner wanted to have a crafts room, which it didn't have because the pantry was being used as a craft. makes the pantry unusable as a pantry, uh, so that you had a, a you know, collision conflict uh, happening, happening all the time there. They also wanted to add bedrooms away from this bedroom wing because the bedroom wing had a single door coming into it and a hallway that led to all the bedrooms. So uh, whenever the owners had guests, uh, they wouldn't last three days because it began to smell bad because they're climbing all over the guests or if the guests if you have guests with kids and they correct the kids and it makes everybody nervous and on edge. And so everybody's walking on eggshells when they had guests. So we decided to uh, come up with a solution for that. The owners wanted a wine storage room, a safe room, and then fix the kitchen so that it connects to the rear yard. So let's talk about the, uh, the solution here. So, uh, with a renovation, my recommendation is to keep as much of the existing house as possible in the renovation. However, in order to uh, sometimes to take two steps forward, you have to take one step backwards. And so let's, uh, let's start with uh, the utility room right here. This is a utility room right now. And it's got, uh, this box is an air conditioning duct return air that goes to the uh, air conditioning unit in the attic. And then in front of that, and of course the base of it, is some cabinets with uh, the return air grill. And so the cabinets, half the cabinets are useless because they're really just a return air grill and for whatever reason they move the, the, the flue back here. So this makes a, a, a good first potential to remove some walls. So. I'm gonna uh, 
right, we're moving these. This is my handy dandy eraser made by Whiteout. And as it's been pointed out to me, it's a right handed Whiteout eraser pen. And I'm left handed, so I'll use my right hand here. Anyway, so I'm going to get rid of those walls and we'll put everything back that we need to. The next thing I want to fix is the kitchen and connect the kitchen to the backyard. And so in order to do that, this wall here has got to go. And of course the cap cabinets, we're going to, we gave the cabinets to Habitat for Humanity, wonderful countertops, wonderful appliances. They're still working, still good life in them. And they uh, help fund some more Habitat for Humanity. So if you're going to do a renovation like this, I recommend uh, getting with the owner with your local Habitat for Humanity or some other group like that. And don't just fill up a landfill with all this, uh, the cabinetry and the countertops and appliances. Recycle them and do some good with them. So here's, we're gonna get rid of the butler's pantry for now. We'll put one back and one that's more usable. Okay, the uh, powder room is just a tiny little powder room. We're gonna, I'm gonna relocate it and move it. And so I'll show you with that because remember we're adding on two bedrooms to this house. Uh, so we get, get rid of this closet here. The garage, the garage, I'm gonna get rid of this garage door and I wanna make it, take it, uh, take the advice of uh, one of the watchers tonight uh, and make it a carport. So what we're gonna do is remove the garage door and I'm gonna add a carport out here by just adding three columns, one, two, three. And so my uh, cars can park here and here. It'll be open air. We'll have uh, you know, lattice work on the sides. And what this does is it frees up this area of the garage walls. We're gonna remove the roof on the garage, a single single story roof. And then uh, we're gonna do some other magic or floor plan magic to uh, create the, uh, the additions, if you will. And we're gonna go two stories for the, uh, uh, to add the bedrooms. So this is just a, a lean to crummy shed, not, not a big, uh, Uh, big investment there. So we're gonna get rid of this. Uh, and we're gonna cut out this wall here in the back of the garage that opened onto the uh, storage room. And then we're gonna take, come back here. And then for this area, in order to open the kitchen to the back, I'm gonna open this up here, and I'm not just tearing down walls. We're actually gonna put in beams and, and uh, beautiful things like that. But in the kitchen, across here, I make this, uh, let me see, come across here. And I give uh, four feet between the kitchen counter and the island. And we'll put a great big island here because the, the island, we have enough space here so that the island will be essentially two counters, a rows of cabinets back to back, and then an extra foot or 14 inches for knee space for uh, sitting at the island. And so you've got this commanding island here. You can sit, you've got five bar stools on it and you still have all your room here the furniture, we haven't touched it for the uh, breakfast table here. And then uh, there's, and you still have all your room here. The furniture, we haven't touched it for the uh, breakfast table here. And then uh, there's then uh, in, in dark ink in just a minute. So, uh, so this becomes a hallway to the backyard from the kitchen. So we'll put two great big doors here and then this part of the kitchen 
this counter here, we're going to put accordion windows. They're above the counter, but they'll all open up because we want to open the kitchen to the outdoor area. And so for the outdoor area, the same way I added columns here over the garage to make this a, 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 an extended garage, or move the garage forward actually, we're going to put an outdoor uh, covered area uh, in the backyard. So we'll add a, we added an outdoor fireplace, which is a wonderful atmosphere thing to add. Uh, also, when you're having, uh, if you're going to watch uh, football games or uh, different activities, uh, when LSU is doing great, football is huge in, this, in Louisiana. So we'll add four columns, and this is going to be a covered outdoor area with an outdoor kitchen. Uh, and the, so the kitchen opens directly onto this outdoor area. Now, what that doesn't have is, remember, we're going to So I've got to add a den back here somewhere. We're going to have a den that also opens onto the backyard area. I need to get to the den. In the kitchen, you come. And let's remove some more of this wall. Let's see. And I'm sorry, I put the fireplace in the wrong spot. I'm going to create a hallway right here. Nice broad hallway. So the kitchen opens up to windows across here. We've got a uh, fireplace right there. And then this wall goes on back. And this is our den. This is our den area. When uh, we come over to here, let me see. Open this up a little. With the garage, the old garage, we're going to create that in uh, several functions. One is this becomes the new garage here. This door stays, and you come into the drop zone, into the kitchen, or into the den, or the outdoor area. And then over here, we're going to put the wine room. I'm going to expand this over to here and then back to here. So we've got a, uh, a new den and it accesses the outside. The back side of the den here will be the uh, craft room. This will be the wine. And since the wine room is going to be, it's got a, its own generator, it's got its own air conditioner, uh, and it's you know, temperature controlled, and it's essentially isolated from everything else in the house. So it's got to have a great big freezer type door. This is also our safe room. And so what better place to wait out for the robbers than to have a nice uh, Chardonnay or a uh, or nice glass of wine. Now this space, we're going to use part of it to have a very welcoming stairway that will go upstairs. Uh, to the second floor and then this space left over right here is going to be the new powder room. All right. So this will be uh, the new bathroom. What makes a room a safe room? Great question. A safe room is if someone's going to come rob you or do harm to you and you see them coming, you have to have a little bit of warning. It gives you a place to run to and hide, uh, and they can't get into it. Uh, it's, you've got to let them in. So it's, uh, uh, it's safe. So uh, the wine room is large enough. It's got some tables in here. So you've got a place to sit. You can... Uh, uh, you've got uh, telecommunications here. Uh, you've got your own separate air conditioning system. And then uh, if they cut off electricity, it's got a generator. So you're, uh, you're, you're more safe. Now, if uh, uh, the SEAL Team 6 is coming after you, 
sorry, this isn't going to help you. But this, other than that, it'll be good. So who gets safe rooms? Someone who's afraid that uh, are susceptible to being attacked or, or, or robbed. Uh, and safe rooms don't have to be certainly as big as this. This is bigger than a car. You can get two cars in here. Uh, but you're also signed. A safe room is, is a, a place, if a tornado's coming, you go to the safe room and, you know, a tornado can come over the house. If, the, if it takes the house, the safe room will be uh, remaining. If a, tor if a hurricane comes, the same thing. Uh, most homes have safe rooms. So it's, uh, uh, if, if, if you want one, you can have them. And they actually rate safe rooms into the type of safe are they, you know. Uh, are they uh, safe like uh, 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 you know, a, a, a despot leader of a world country? You know, you need you need to be able to go down to the third basement, and uh, so a bunker buster won't hurt you, but they'll destroy the palace. Uh, I'm not talking about that safe a safe room. This is just a for the casual burger burglar, casual robber. They're thwarted and they can't get to you, and you're safe. The police have plenty of time to come save you. So, uh, come to this room here. This is now going to be the uh, the utility room. And what I've done with the utility, I've moved the. This is now going to be the uh, the utility room. And what I've done with the utility, I've moved the four to six feet of this room. You cannot put counter space because you have to get into the room. If you move that door to the center of this room like so, you can have counter space that entire uh, distance. And the same thing on this side. So the return air, uh, we put here in the corner. And so that's a return air, comes in from here and it, uh, the air comes in from the wall and it goes up into the attic, the air conditioning system. So we've got a, uh, a utility room right here uh, that, that uh, works very well. It's also, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's the uh, butler's pantry. I call it utility room. It's the butler's pantry right here. So this is the butler's pantry. It's a great big walk-in pantry. This side is all counters. So your uh, uh, your coffee maker, your uh, appliances that you want out can all be here. This is also used as a staging area uh, when you're going to have a big party. And then... Uh, it, it's got uh, plenty of room for an extra refrigerator, freezer, and uh, wall space that's very accessible for sh shelves and storage of uh, pantry goods. So it's, uh, you close the door and uh, nobody sees it. If you do open the door, and I'm sorry, the door opens this way, uh, you can, uh, you can't, you see these lovely cabinets, you don't see the, all the food storage on this, on this back wall. So, uh, let me begin after of the proposed, which is here. And so just to analyze things, what we've done is we've added an outdoor living space right here. We've added another one in right here. And we've added one even for the formal living room here. And one of the fun things with uh, the, the floor plans I like to do is make it to where you can go in and out of all these spaces and do loops. Uh, and uh, it makes the, the party flow, if you will, is, is much, much better. Uh, and, and you can accommodate lots when you do that. So with uh, the craft room, the craft room is here. And the craft room is combined with the utility room. So you've got the washer and the dryer, but you've got ample counter space. And there's even room here for a table uh, to do crafts inside here. Uh, it's uh, neaten it up a little bit if you want your friends, if you're going to show off your wine. But we've got the wine and the safe room combo right here. So we've got our den. And here's the den right here. We got stairs that open to the den that go upstairs to a two bedroom suite area. And each bedroom suite has a balcony, 
in the back and a balcony here in the front. So this garage addition is actually a balcony for the upstairs. So we end up with this uh, compatible roof that's two stories that goes with the rest of the house. Uh, let me see, the uh, other items, we've got, uh, here's our, you, our butler's pantry right here. And then we've got our kitchen, which is lovely kitchen. The big island. Views out to the uh, patio area. I've got louvers or lattice work, if you will, right here and here to help define the, uh, the carport. But notice there's no garage doors. Uh, and so the tendency, if you're gonna store things in the garage, it's gonna be on the cabinets and that are right over here. Uh, the uh, one thing that I did add to the house is the existing house has a huge, huge attic. And they wanted to have uh, storage in the attic or use it for Christmas items and things like that. But they wanted to, uh, they didn't like the pull down stair, which is in this particular house, they had 10 foot ceilings and pulling down that attic stair was, uh, you know, what the life of the owner was worth. And so what we did is we added, we pulled out the wet bar that was in the uh, live, formal living room uh, and added a stairway here, a fixed stairway, and it'll have, it has a door. So it's uh, a fixed stairway just to go up to the uh, attic which is huge and uh, lots of uh, storage for uh, Christmas ornaments, for all sorts of seasonal decorations and, and extra things. It's even big enough with the stair, it's a four foot wide stair. You can get furniture up there if you wanted. And a future owner of the, of the house, purchase of the house, could actually take that and develop this into a second floor uh, with bedrooms and dormers. You'd have to add uh, dormers for it. So that's, uh, that's kind of a summary. Let me take a few questions and uh, a final before and after. So, the, don't you only need double five eighths between the garage and the living space? The, uh, you, there are different ways to uh, achieve a rated wall for, uh, between uh, the garage and the living spaces. Uh, and in this area, this particular, we added, uh, uh, rock or sheetrock that's fire rated uh, in the ceiling of the existing garage and then added uh, some uh, trim boards on top of it. So what is the square size of the house? The original house was about uh, 6,000 square feet and we added uh, another uh, 1,000 square feet to it. So, so it's about a 7,000 square foot uh, house. All right. Uh, you just got, your daughter just got a necklace with my logo on it. I love it. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, my logo, we've worked on it for uh, years. Uh, and what this is a symbol of is the uh, golden rectangle. Uh, and then it's twisted a little bit. We rotated it, or I rotated it, so that it, it uh, uh, begins to look a little bit like an ionic column, which is one of the Greek columns. Uh, uh, you've got Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. So, uh, let me see, uh, I, go down. let me see, uh, why is the large, why is it large houses have the front door, the garage door, and the kitchen not near each other? Okay. Well, in this house, the garage is here, or the carport, and you come right into the garage, straight into the kitchen. Now, of course, the, uh, the pantry is down here, and it's, uh, if this were all a new house, the ideal houses, uh, some of the new houses we've done, uh, you go from the garage straight into the, or by the pantry, and then you can unload all your food and then go into the kitchen. Uh, but the garage is a, it's a destination spot. Also, the garage really should be next to a drop zone, uh, especially if you have kids, uh, have all their socks, their shoes, uh, their uh football gear, if they're playing football or their soccer or lacrosse or, or whatever sport they're playing, you can store all that stuff here and have lockers even so that when they come and go place to store those things, uh, when they come in, if you pick them up from school or if they come in from uh, school, have them come in through that way and they drop everything, uh, pick them up from school or if they come in from uh, school, have them come in through that way 
and they drop everything. Uh, suggestion. That's a good idea. Uh, let me see. Uh, we're building these garages way too small nowadays. You can't put a pickup truck in. I understand that. I understand that. Uh, I had one client uh, who had, an, had room for, let me see, uh, he had a bunch of Ferraris and uh, Porsches. And so I was thinking that that's all he needed. So he had eight foot wide garage doors, had three of them. And uh, three in front and three in the back, so he had six of them. And then uh, he calls me, and uh, I'd worked with him for over a year on the design of the house. And he said, Kevin, I'm really having trouble getting my pickup truck in the garage. But if we fold the, the mirrors in, we can actually squeeze in, but we got to be real careful. And I said, pickup truck? You never told me you had a pickup truck. So... From that time on, if I can, garage doors, and it's a very good comment about the size of garage doors. I'll make garage doors at least 10 feet wide. And uh, I'll make the spaces inside at least 12 foot wide for each vehicle, plus some space on the sides if you're going to have cabinets and storage. Uh, at least, the very least, 24 if not 26 feet deep. So that's a, an excellent comment. Thank you very much for the uh, uh, comment on the garages. Gambritas, that's a $2 million home. I'll never tell. It's, uh, my clients don't want me to say how much their houses cost, but houses cost a lot today. You're correct. Uh, what does an architect cost uh, for drawings of my three-story, 600-square-foot? Uh, architects charge uh, in uh, any number of ways. Uh, if they charge by a percentage, uh, it would be... On the low end, say 6%, the high end, 12 to 10. But understand that you get more, uh, you know, check out, interview your architect. Uh, check out my book. I have a book I wrote, uh, five or six, it's called The Forever Home. And it's how to work with an architect to get the, design the home of your dreams. And in here, one of the chapters uh, is about how, Questions you should ask your architect. How do you select an architect? Do you, do you even need an architect, all right? The, uh, you see most of the book is words. Uh, the beautiful pictures are houses that, we've, that I've done. Uh, so it's all my work, but the book is not about these houses. It's not about the, uh, the designs I've done. The designs just illustrate what I'm talking about. The book is all about advice I've given homeowners for 42 years. And... Uh, in here, uh, as far as checking out uh, how to select an architect, I also talk about how to select an interior designer, a landscape architect, and a contractor. It takes a team to do a beautiful house. And uh, uh, so if you go on my website, uh, you can download the first chapter for free. Uh, and uh, the book is in its second printing. And I keep getting notices from uh, 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 the publisher to send them more boxes of the, of the books because they keep selling out on Amazon. So uh, a, a big question to ask is when do you need an architect and when do you not need an architect? And uh, my advice is depending upon how special the house is and how uh, uh, Im important the design is and how long you're going to live there. If it's your forever home, you're well advised to use an architect. Uh, and remember that if, when you look at the life cycle price cost of a house, and that's over the, the lifetime of the house or your lifetime, the majority of the expenses that you'll spend uh, that will cost you on your house are your mortgage, and, uh, paying for the house and paying for the maintenance of the house and paying for the utilities on your house. Only 2% or less of the whole house cost, the life cycle cost, is your architect. So uh, keep that in mind. So don't be penny wise and dollar foolish. And uh, uh, designing a house is a very emotional thing. It's one that I love doing. Uh, my clients love it. Uh, and it, it, it should be fun. It's expensive, yes, but it is. it should be fun. And... Architects only do, for every year, 
1% of the housing stock is increased by architects. Sometimes it's two, but usually it's 1%. And years ago, decades ago, uh, I was, I think, the first architect to give a, a conference or a seminar at a national convention for the AIA on uh, residential renovations. And uh, what my comment was, was 99% uh, of the houses get a year older every year. And after 10, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, those houses all need to be renovated. And so it's like, you know, uh, designed well or not designed. There's architects and interior designers that are skilled in being able to fix a floor plan. The number of houses that you can do, there's no competition. There's not enough of us around to do them all. So. Uh, I encourage anyone who's got the skills and the interest, get into fixing the floor plans because the renovation market is not going to go away. Every year it gets 1% to 2% bigger. The housing stock in the United States, over half of the houses in the United States right now are 45 to 50 years old. They need renovations if they haven't already had them. Uh, uh, this house was built in the 1980s, this is the 2020s, all right? So it lasted 40 years. It had a good run for that kitchen. Uh, but now it's, uh, now it's been renovated and uh, it'll go, you know, for another generation. So my daughters don't live, as far as they expect, my daughters don't live in an architect designed house, but everything, everyone can benefit from what you learned tonight, all right? Uh, uh, my daughters, I've, I've worked on fixing their floor plans, but I didn't design their original houses. Uh, as they, uh, their kids get older and their, uh, their jobs generate more money, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to, to design my house. But uh, uh, the houses they live in now are benefiting from a fix of floor plan law. And so uh, everybody can enjoy that and... Uh, I have to redraw for architects all the time. Uh, well, uh, then, uh, unfortunately, many architects, well, actually, architects specialize, just like doctors specialize. My specialty happens to be custom residential, and I have a second specialty. It's historic restoration and preservation. Uh, and I actually combine those two into new structures as well. Well, uh, uh, you know, Architects that, that focus on other uh, commercial work or fourplexes or uh, apartment complexes, chances are if they, they'd love to do a house, but if they do commercial buildings, uh, they're not going to give you a house that it's going to look like a library or it's going to feel like a library. They charge either by the hour, by the uh, percentage of the construction costs is typically it. Okay, you're, uh, who's goofy? Welcome. Uh, I'm a senior in high school. I love architecture, but I'm not sure if the career's for me. Uh, some advice I was given when I was in high school was uh, <laughs> if anybody can talk you out of being an architect, let them. Because otherwise, it is just too much exercise. It's too much work. I have four brothers. All four of them make tons more money than I do. However, I'm, I'll be 70 this summer. Three of my brothers have already retired. I'm happy to retire, and they're trying to figure out what it is they want to do now for fun. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now tonight. So uh, is this John Goodman? I'm flattered. I've met John Goodman. As a matter of fact, uh, my wife is from Bogalusa, and John Goodman married one of the girls that she went to high school with. Actually, uh this girl's mother taught my wife how to dance. And uh, we're, we're both married, and we both married Bogalusa girls. So I love John Goodman. He's a wonderfully talented art, uh, actor. So uh, where on the Gulf Coast are you? I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to, uh, to work on projects on the Gulf Coast. Uh, I'm licensed in Texas, Louisiana, 
Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. I uh, have a nice convertible uh, BMW, so I'm happy to travel. So uh, the next live, it's time to wrap up. Our next TikTok will be uh, February 19th. It's in two weeks, 6 p.m., and I'll tackle another house. Now, uh, if you have any recommendations, uh, please give me some comments. If you'd like to have me look at some specific aspect of the house, I'll be happy to do that and put together something. And you only do your, your house. But uh, what I typically do is these are actual houses that I've done. Uh, and so all of these TikTok lives are real things. And, uh, but I'll be happy to uh, focus on something. Well, I'll point out the rooms again. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, the rooms. This is the foyer, the formal living room, the dining room. This is the butler's pantry, the keeping room, the kitchen. The stairway is a stairway, a fixed stairway to the a safe way to get into the attic. This is a covered outdoor area for the formal living room. This is a covered outdoor area, keeping room area. Here's a carport, which I extended from the original uh, garage. This is a, a wine room, which is also a safe room. Here's a craft room, which is also the utility room. Here's the informal den. It opens out into the back patio and the rear yard. So, uh, let me see. The next live is at uh, February 19th at 6 p.m. Central. Uh, so, uh, welcome, JPO. Uh, this is Kevin Harris and uh, TikTok Live. So, we'll see you in two weeks. And thank you for watching. Loved having you and loved your comments.